Today, we're going to look at how to achieve the correct tone for various styles of playing. We have many stages in the chain from plucking the strings to the listener's ears that can alter the tone of our guitar. The strings, how we pluck the strings, how the instrument is made, the pickups, the onboard tone controls, effects pedals, amp types and settings, engineers on live PA or recording desks, acoustics of the room, and atmospherics. Let's start with the strings. A general rule is that the thicker the string, the better the tone. The issue with this idea is playability. Obviously it's harder to hold down bar chords or achieve bends in vibrato if using heavy strings, although you should gain a fuller sound simply because thicker strings will vibrate more air. It follows that if you use thinner or lighter strings, then the sound will be thinner and weaker. You're also likely to break more strings if they are too light. There are many exceptions to this rule, and one that I'd like to mention is that the great Jimmy Page managed to achieve all those great sounding riffs and solos using light gauge strings. I guess that you'll just have to experiment with different strings until you find the right set for you. Now, on to how we plug the strings. This, for me, is the most important part of the chain as regards to achieving the right tone. At this point we have so many choices in doing this. I'm going to start by using my thumb to strum the strings from above the 12th fret and moving along almost to the bridge using an E major chord. I hope you can hear the different tones I am getting as I do this. Please try this yourself. Now we'll try the same thing with a plectrum or pick. These can be made in different shapes and sizes and can be made from a variety of materials including different plastics such as nylon or acetate and even metal. In fact, Brian May of Queen famously used sixpence pieces to help him to achieve his tone. OK, let's try this with a pick. Again, I hope you can hear the different tones I'm getting at different points along the string. A softer tone over the neck. and a harder tone as I get to the bridge. Try this yourself. We can also try this on a single fretted note. The same changes in tone will apply. Please feel free to experiment as much as possible with this. Now I'd like to combine the next few parts of the tone chain, that is, the type of guitar and how it is built, the pickups and the onboard controls. We can achieve a whole range of tones depending on if the guitar is solid or hollow bodied, acoustic or electric, has single coil or humbucker pickups, and the configuration of pickup selector switch and tone controls. We can listen to a range of guitarists achieving their own individual tones. If you can, I suggest checking out the following guitarists. For the biting tone of a nylon strung classical guitar, listen to Paco de Lucia. Or for a more mellow tone, have a look at Andre Segovia. For some classic jazz tones, have a listen to Joe Pass, who would typically play with his thumb. Django Reinhardt using a plectrum on an acoustic guitar or Pat Metheny for a more modern sound using effects. For those of you out there using Fender type guitars, why not check out Roy Buchanan using his Fender Telecaster to produce a really sharp and individual sound. Mark Knopfler 
using a between pickups or out of phase setting and country style finger picking on his Fender Strat. Stevie Ray Vaughan is a classic example of someone using heavy gauge strings and a pick to achieve a really full sound. And finally Jeff Beck, an artist that's explored the boundaries of what's possible using a Fender Strat to inspire countless players around the world. For anyone using a Gibson or a humbucker loaded guitar, I would definitely listen to the guitar-led sounds of bands such as ACDC, Led Zeppelin and Guns N' Roses. Although it's worth noting that these types of guitar are used in many other styles of music. Please check out these players and their music and you will hear a distinctive difference between their various tones. Now we come to outboard controls such as you would find on effects pedals, amps and mixing desks. At all of these stages we can alter the tone of our instrument by changing the bass, middle and treble controls but don't forget that you are always only altering the original sound so try to achieve the best tone you can to begin with using your fingers or a pick. The last thing I'd like to mention is that the environment in which you're playing can make a big difference to your sound. There would be a massive variation in how you and others hear things depending on if you're in your front room, on stage at a venue with great acoustics, or playing in the open air with the wind blowing the sound all over the place. Obviously, all of these things will have an effect on the tone you create. Experimentation is the key to finding your own tone, so try as many combinations of the things discussed in this lesson, and hopefully before long, you'll begin to achieve the sound that is right for you. Bye for now.